Hi, this is Elderly, and I'm here to call BULLSHIT! In today's update notification, IS introduced us to a new offense building in Ether Raids. The SAFE DEFENSE. The name by itself already implies what it's supposed to do. It's face answer to deal with force turn 1 maps by simply cancelling them. Or is this building actually overhyped? Let's take a look. The description sounds as this. Until turn X. X? X? Do you, do you say X or X? Until turn X, structure level, after skill activation at start of defensive turn, if raiding party is outside the defensive team's range or is within two rows and seven columns centered on a structure, defensive turn ends immediately. <laughs> now, this is a typical wake freestyle description and I've seen and contributed to a lot of the discussion today. So let's address this piece by piece to find out what's going on. Until turn X. X? This is the easiest part for now. The building will only be available at level 1 upon introduction. So until we get an upgrade, this reads in turn 1. Phew. So, in turn 1, after skill activation at start of defensive turn. Now this one is really vague. After skill activation of defensive turn. What kind of skills do we have that activate on the defensive turn? If you do take a close look to what happens at the beginning of the enemy turn, you can see some kind of order in which things activate. Step 1 is the Catapult and Duma's upheaval skill. More on that later. Step 2 are HP and stat checks. Skills like the armor boots, isolation, gravity or infantry pulls check for the health and stats of the targets and apply their effects. Next up are buffs and debuffs. Buffs are all sort of tactic skills. Wave skills, order skills, stuff like odd recovery, by left's NFU, and also the self-provided extra movement of Sigurd Special. Debuffs include chills, ploys, and also your school and shrine buildings. Next in order are health effects, starting with damaging effects like Winter Bernie's weapon, followed by healing from the healing tower, renewal, or odd recovery. The next thing happening is the unit in the extra slot ending their turn. I would call all of these passive activations. They always happen in this order without real conditions. Only after that we get to the active AI skill activations. This is stupid. This category includes dances, active healing and rallies. In which order they happen is set in the AI movement. Sometimes rallies happen first, sometimes dances happen first, sometimes units are just not eligible. It depends on the setup of your map and also on the position of the enemy. Now the real question is, what is meant by the term after skill activation? Will the effect of the safe defense take place after the passive activations, so at the same time when the extra slot unit ends their turn, or only after active AI decisions? This will matter a lot as you'll see soon. So let's leave it at that for now and continue. So in turn 1, after skill activation, if raiding party is outside of the defensive team's range, defensive turn ends immediately. So this is the main effect of the building and it reads like it targets the gimmicks of the 7th slot dancer trap. If you remember, the unit in the extra slot used to end turn right away if you didn't take out a unit in the same turn and by ending their turn, they got eligible to receive a dance. These so-called dance traps were commonly used especially with Duo Sigurd, who would move forward to refresh the extra slot unit, increase his threat range compared to what was shown to you previously, and therefore triggers follow-up actions like rallies and further dances to enable units who couldn't reach you before to start acting. So let's assume defense takes place after passive skill activation, as most people understand the phrasing. This would mean that staying out of the visible danger threat would force the complete enemy team to immediately end their turns, stopping extra slot dancing and healing effects from restores, returns and co. Let me say this straight away. This is such a huge bullshit, I actually can't believe they did this. I know that many people have complained about dancer traps especially, but this is not how you fix things. It goes against so much more features which the game provides. Are you telling me that a healer is not allowed to heal a target anymore, 
even if for example Daddy Hector dealt 40 points of damage to your whole team by his dual skill. Really? It doesn't make sense and hits so much more than we are currently seeing at the top of the iceberg. So what if the safe defense only activates after all sorts of skill activation? This would mean Sigurd still gets to dance, Veronica still gets to restore and Sarah still gets to return. If you end up in the new threat range of enemies, you'll be just as dead as before. The fence would actually do nothing. So can we therefore say for sure it will activate after all passive skills took action? Not necessarily, cause there is a third effect. In turn 1, after skill activation, whenever that is, if raiding party is outside the defensive team's range, or is within two rows and seven columns centered on a structure, defensive turn ends immediately. First of all, you can't be centered within two rows in this game. Period. By the way, I'm trying to swear less and it is so effin' hard. I never realized there was such a ghetto kid. Makes sense that my four-year-old daughter is sometimes walking through our home mumbling the f-word out of context. School teachers will love me. So with two rows it probably means the row of the structures and the row above that. And seven columns, yeah, the map has six. So if you put the building in either lane three or four, it will basically target your whole starting position. If you didn't manage to stay out of the enemy's range, they will still end turn as long as you are still in your starting row. This is why I'm actually not sure when the effect of the building takes place. I do think it will be after passive skill activation, but I could totally see your dancers and healers running stupidly to the front and end their turn there. Only the update will show us the truth. But, and this is a big but. Great. I'm so uptight now that I'm starting to hear sexual stuff in harmless phrasings. What this also includes are ranged calves. Yes, you've heard right. Bye bye every calf line ever, as the enemy can now easily just sit out turn 1 fearless within your threat range and deal with you the round after that. And this is certain, I don't see any type of communication issue in that phrasing. So to recall. I am not entirely sure when the effect takes place, but I know it's devastating. Even more to be honest if units still dance and heal and rally and move out of position by doing that. So what's the counterplay? Cause let's be real, everyone can have that building and everyone will have that building. Catapult and Duma's upheaval come to mind. If you target both lane 3 and 4, both effects will certainly take place before the fence activates and all your shenanigans will still take place. So there is some sort of counterplay. But, and that's another big one, here's again another case of shady phrasing. Cause the safety fence does not say that the units have to be within their own area of effect, but within two rows and seven columns centered on a structure. Any structure? If this is true, your chances of sniping that building with only a catapult for light season, for example, are 1 out of 6. Yay! Only summoning is worse. And it actually enables even more. Calf lines are usually built with a sort of own defense fence to make it harder to reach them. With this building, you are obviously free to take out any building of calf lines in turn 1 to reach them in round 2, even with units like Ninja Lin, who previously had a hard time against these sort of maps. This also includes effects like Cantor or Trace. You can even take out buildings which are placed deep inside the defender's territory, as long as you move and repo and dance all of your units back in lane 2 at the end of turn 1. Wow! This also includes testing traps, even those who potentially harm your enemy, cause we know Veronica won't give a shit about her damaged ally anymore. You also get a free turn to set up movement positions, important for gale forces for example, who require smiting units in the bottom row, or also setting up your own cheesy strategies like getting your own units in Wings of Mercy range by the damage of Winter Bernie without losing a turn. This goes as far as having the option to snipe a single target with Legendary Leaf for example, or even kill multiple targets with gale force, canto trace interactions, 
as long as all your units make it back to row 2 at the end of turn 1, enemy teams will not move, even in case half of their team was wiped out below their ass. Is this another case where they didn't think it through? Clear winners are also safe ball offenders who can easily end turn, tank everyone in turn 2, and easily clean up with the ridiculous bolt tower damage in turn 3. Miller and Fjorm can have a huge revival with isolation, as odd recovery skills are basically useless out of turn 1 shenanigans. It is huge, no matter how you look at it, and it will change defending in AR. Safe teams on defense will become a lot more attractive, trying to best to make the team just untargetable. So don't be too happy about it, Reddit folks. Justice has not spoken for you. But we already have counters to that as well. I actually wonder if this is why we got a light mythic right now, cause they actually will have to give us new defensive mythics who can finally empower the lost IP and flyer ball teams, which will have to come back somehow. I would like to say that we don't know how bad it will be until we get the update, but honestly, it looks bad. Really bad. And I am not happy with the way Fae handles the situation. I understand the build-up frustration against Force Turn 1 teams, but this is not a counter, this is a complete shutdown. It is as if they said safe skills do no longer activate as in Pawns of Loki. Or Edelgard can no longer spawn on Etherate's maps. Wouldn't that be hilarious, cancel culture people? I fear we'll go back to the early days of Book 5, where Etherate's was such a joke that the best defense was literally having the bonus mythic and the second one with 14 mergers in total reducing your lift loss to 26, granting you full defense rewards every season. Yay! IS has to make money somehow? I hope I am wrong, though I know I am not. But there is light. The player base has proven to be smarter than the IS headquarters in multiple occasions, and we will come up with new interesting defenses as we always have. And I still want to be one of them. So, see you again with working defense replays in like a half a year? How do you feel about the new structure? Are you happy to see an easy counter against turn 1 maps, or are you afraid you might still mess up in round 2? Was this the right way to address the issue? Let me know in the comments, and I would super appreciate your support on this video. I went totally out of my schedule to provide you with this detailed information as soon as possible. Until next time. Bitch, 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 fuck! Oh god, that felt so relieving. I'll edit it out. See ya!